Listen to what I'm going to say, right? Sakura is never going to change. Maybe she's on some kind of Peter Pan thing where she's not going to grow old. Or maybe Ono's got a particular kind of fetish. I don't know, whatever it is. At the end of the day, trust me when I say this, all right? Sakura is never going to change. If she does, I'll eat my hat. I will straight up cook that shit in a frying pan and I will eat it. She's got a home. Pigs are flying in a hell that's frozen over, and I'm eating all the hats that I've ever owned. Sakura, a character who seemed like she was never gonna break out from her mold and grow up, did the unthinkable. She grew up. I guess I shouldn't really be surprised, I mean Street Fighter V has been notorious for shaking up a lot of its fan favourite characters, and having Sakura now be part of the roster meant a change might have been inevitable, but man, I don't know. Part of me felt so sure they weren't going to risk it with someone as established as Sakura. I mean, it would be like them giving Ryu a job and some new clothes after 30 years, you know what I mean? Crazy ideas. Change can be a good thing, especially if it's handled with consideration to what the character has already established about themselves. That said, I have been very vocal about my opinions regarding some of the choices Capcom made with the characters in this game, and I still stand by most of those points too, but I also give props when they are earned. If something is getting changed, then as long as it makes sense, I will give it a chance. And hey, if it clicks with me too, then yeah man, you've done a good job, big up yourself. Now here we stand with Sakura, a character that's just gone through such a change. It's all very well and good celebrating the fact that she's no longer stagnating as a schoolgirl, but it'll be all for nothing if this change ends up wrecking the character in the process. I'm actually hoping it's a positive progression because despite me being kinda indifferent to the whole schoolgirl trope, Sakura herself had some likeable qualities about her. She intrigued me, I just wanted to see her become something more with those qualities. But to find out where Sakura's at now, we have to see where she's come from. So grab your uniforms and pack a lunch, bruv. We're heading back to school. The old school. Sitting with me at the back of the class. Scratching nights into dreams onto the desk with a blue biro pen. While bumping two-step garage music from my gutter trash Walkman before it chews up my tape for the millionth time. Yeah, nostalgia. Eh, you should probably expect spoilers. Sakura's origins date back to the time period of when Ryu won the first World Warrior Tournament. We're talking Street Fighter 1 era here, that's how old school we're getting. Sakura had been interested in the street fighting scene already, but seeing Ryu in action really grabbed her attention. She wanted to learn everything there was to know about being a street fighter, and Ryu was now her reference point. Sakura idolised him, watching back footage of Ryu's fights and studying his martial arts style as closely as she could. From her observations, she in turn developed a somewhat unorthodox version of the Hado fighting style. It might not have been the real thing, but it sure as hell got the job done. In fact, at one point, Sakura and her friend Kei were about to get jumped by a bunch of shady looking dudes, and that's when Sakura put her self-taught martial arts into action. While attempting to perform Ryu's hurricane kick, Sakura kinda flopped it, instead delivering a series of low spinning sweeps that ended with a strong kick. While the move wasn't what she had intended to do, it managed to get the upper hand on those thugs, and Sakura would later develop this move into one of her supers. Over time, she slowly gained a small rep for herself, being triumphant in local street fights, but ultimately, she felt unrefined. She needed real feedback, and figured Ryu himself would be the best person to ask. So, one day, she skipped school to go find the guy. Plain truant, yeah? Yeah, bad girl! Uh, P.S. Kids, stay in school. Sakura manages to find Ryu and introduces herself to him as his number one fan, requesting that he becomes her mentor. She gets aired off though, because Ryu was still in training himself, which is honestly fair enough, but you didn't need to be a shithead about it, Ryu. Rude. Over time, Sakura's rep grows a little more, eventually finding a friendly rival in Karen Kanzuki, whom I've already reviewed. Twice, so check that out if you need to know her side of the story. Feeling that she had grown as a fighter, Sakura searched for Ryu again. Her trail led her to Dan, a Hado-style dropout who opened up his own dojo that had... Zero students. Dan, being the scoundrel he is, told Sakura he could take her to Ryu if she joined his dojo. Naturally, Dan had no idea where Ryu was, but he wasn't going to tell her that, was he? 
Sakura did join his school though, but whether she actually learned anything useful from him was another matter, seeing as her self-taught style was superior to his in pretty much every way. I'm not sure how canon this next part is because Street Fighter Alpha 3's continuity is such a ball ache to figure out, but apparently, during her travels she finds Ken and together they locate Ryu, who had been brainwashed by M. Bison. A fight occurs with them beating Ryu, snapping him out of his mind control. This event in turn is meant to be what changes Ryu's mood towards her, going on to appreciate Sakura's admiration for him and starting to treat her with the respect she deserves. He even offers to meet up with her again in the future to test how far their training has gotten. While the canonicity of these events are muddy, there has to be some truth to it, because during Street Fighter 4, she meets Ryu yet again. He acts more respectful to her now, greeting her warmly and asking her if she's developed her style any further. They spar with each other a bit, showing us that a somewhat light-hearted bond had developed between them now. Moving on to Street Fighter 5 and set after the events of the main storyline for this game, Sakura is now older, having graduated out of school, fucking finally, and started working at a local video games arcade to earn an income. Juggling real life priorities meant no more messing around now, she had obligations to uphold. This sudden swing in commitments caused Sakura to lose a lot of focus on street fighting though. While she still enjoyed it, she began to question what it was she was really seeking out of life. In her younger days, her goal was to become stronger, but now that she's older, strength is something she is in abundance of. It's only when she's invited to spar with Kareem does she open up about these concerns, saying that she no longer finds fulfillment in fighting for no other reason than to prove one's skills. There has to be something more to it, otherwise, what's the point? Isn't it just a waste of time? One night after work, she bumps into Ryu himself, but finds it difficult to summarise exactly what's causing her to feel this way. It's only after they spar with one another does Sakura finally understand what she's looking for. The Dick Okay, no. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's partly true, but not in such a vulgar way. It, it's not a fucking Dajinshi, is it? Is it? Sakura had become the fighter she always wanted to be, but it was a lonely dream. To gain strength only to grow old and die felt like a waste. Her strength was hers, and when she dies one day, that strength will leave with her. Sakura realises her new dream in life is to start a family, one that will create bonds and link her generation directly to the next. The strength of life to pass on a legacy through her lineage, to fight for the future rather than just fighting for herself. Sakura's new dream was now fully understood and her journey towards achieving this goal had begun. Visual design. Before I start this section, I just want to get one thing very clear, right? I don't outright hate the school uniform look, I just got bored of it very quickly. To me, once you've seen one sailor styled school outfit, you've mostly seen them all. Anime and manga tend to oversaturate themselves with this uniform, though it might be because their target audiences are teenagers after all, so I guess it's expected. But just from a personal standing point, it's kinda dull, and if you're trying to grab my attention, the last thing you want to do is present a character to me that's wearing something which a hundred other characters from a hundred different IPs are also wearing. It's one of the reasons I was so happy to see Kareen change out of the school uniform for Street Fighter 5, and one of the reasons I was so pissed off that Ibuki had changed into it. So where does that put me with Sakura's design then? After all, she's wearing your typical white and blue sailor style top with a yellow tie. This top is most commonly matched up with a pleated skirt, hers being blue to complement her collar. That's your standard kit as far as a school uniform goes, and it's taking up most of Sakura's design. For what it's worth, coupled with the red undershirt, the colours are nice and they do sit strongly with each other, so it's not offending me or anything, but it's just kinda regular. It doesn't do anything to wow me. Thankfully, Sakura does have a few little bells and whistles that help to bring out some individuality. The first item to take note of are her red sports shoes. Sakura wears these for comfort since she moves around a lot. She can go from being in class one minute to partaking in a street fight the next, and having footwear that'll accommodate both of those environments is convenient. She's also disrespecting her school's dress code by wearing that long white headband. This item right here is the one thing that tells you everything you need to know about Sakura. She might be dressed up as a schoolgirl, but her current focus definitely does not associate with school activities. Even though Sakura also rocks a pair of fighting gloves that should technically tell you the exact same thing, sometimes she is seen without them, but the headband remains worn. She doesn't take this item off. It's there to remind you that this character is first and foremost a fighter. 
Sakura is presented more than a cut and file schoolgirl and it's thanks to these accessories. That said, as the series progressed and we saw the cast grow older, having Sakura continue to parade around in a school uniform felt odd. She was growing up mentally but visually you couldn't see that progression. It was even more perplexing when Kareen, a girl of Sakura's age, was now running a multi-trillion billion zillion dollar syndicate and Sakura herself looked like she was still hanging around the bloody playground. I know the whole school uniform look is a type of fashion style, I mean it's got a whole scene for itself and everything but I just never saw Sakura as part of that crowd. Her passion was street fighting, hanging around a shopping district somewhere dressed in clothes that make her look like a child doesn't seem like the sort of pastime she would invest in. Based on her Street Fighter 5 cameos, I had low hopes for Sakura's future should she ever appear in a character reveal trailer. And then, she appeared in a character reveal trailer. And then, I started singing hymns on a hill somewhere because somehow Capcom had performed a bloody miracle. As long as it didn't destroy her personality or place her in a role that fell out of character for her, then I was open to any new ideas Capcom could bring to the table for Sakura. And they have not disappointed. Firstly, her hair has grown a little. This might be a very slight and simple thing to point out, but it effectively shows us this character has gotten older, and by keeping the hairstyle fairly similar to her old one, it means visually her face has not become unrecognisable. She's also ditched the white headband in favour of a red one, possibly to pay further homage to Ryu's own look. The red in her design is actually the most striking shade on her now, since the rest of her palette is made up of pink accents on a black and white base layer. Because of this, the red is used to highlight some of the more expected design aspects people tend to look for on this character, which are the headband, the gloves, and of course her underwear, because this wouldn't be Sakura if her underwear wasn't flashing itself every time she kicks someone in the face, yeah? Let's just call it how we see it. Don't pretend it ain't a thing. Sakura's new default outfit is her work uniform. Japanese arcades are a big business and some of the more larger arcades have staff uniforms that take on a more hostess appearance. The frilly skirt and ladies necktie are clear indicators of this style. It's also why she's wearing that headset now, as the item is used to broadcast events to the customers visiting the arcade. My favourite part of her new design though has to be the white button shirt. And you're thinking, the shirt? What's so special about a plain ass white shirt? Well, the reason I like it on Sakura so much is because I feel it's added maturity to the character. Seeing Sakura dressed up in one now just shines the character in a whole new light. She doesn't appear as a little girl to me anymore. This character is a grown woman. I really like Sakura's new look. Yeah, she's technically jumped from one uniform to another, but my god this one just feels fresh on the eyes. Especially for a character like her, who has been around for such a long time and hadn't visibly progressed. This design has visually catapulted Sakura into the next stage of her life, and it couldn't have come soon enough. Personality. In her younger years, Sakura was loud, screaming war cries every time she threw an uppercut. She was a passionate young girl who put all her energy into whatever she was doing. Very little could deter her, and if it did, it wouldn't take her long to find her spirit again. She was a very active girl, full of life and vitality. Sakura was also considered to be quite smart, especially for her age. I mean, she taught herself martial arts simply from watching Ryu do it, and the style she ended up learning was not exactly an easy fighting style to pick up. Granted, she might not practice the style in the same ways Ryu and Ken do, but she's fully developed her own version to the point where she's mastered it. That's pretty extraordinary. Sakura's personality seemed to be the element that kept her on my radar all these years, even when her visual design wasn't doing anything for me. Now that she's grown older, we're seeing a slight tweak in that personality. It's not an overly drastic change that darts the character off down a new direction, but it's just enough of an adjustment to clock that Sakura feels different. She definitely has the energy to fight, but some of that fiery spirit has settled down a little bit. She'll still make a bit of noise, but she's not as loud as she once was. This is entirely normal. It comes with age. Kids that grow to adulthood will occasionally take a few traits with them, but life experiences will either affect some of the traits they currently have or help them form new traits. Having Sakura act a little differently now makes sense. That said, there is one trait of Sakura's that seems to have remained mostly unaffected by her coming of age, and it's a characteristic I seem to have myself. It's the act of openly expressing your emotions, to wear your heart on your sleeve as it were. 
Sakura lives her life by showing us everything she is feeling. She doesn't shut herself down. She never hides her emotions behind barriers or walls because, well, she likely wouldn't know how to. Sakura is a character with a lot of soul in her. Whether she is talking to a close friend about her concerns, or she is yelling at the top of her lungs as she claims a victory, she is unable to hide her emotions because her soul is constantly bursting at the seams. Yeah, we joked about how direct Sakura was when she told Ryu she wanted to have kids one day, but for all the memes we made out of it, this is exactly who Sakura is. She's always been this way. She's always been truthful to herself and her emotions, even if she has to backpedal afterwards because she suddenly embarrassed herself. That is what I've always liked about this character. She's this open book that never minces her feelings, spelling everything out for you right there on the page. Sakura may have grown up and her outlook on life might have shifted, but you can still pick her out from the crowd if simply due to the fact that her emotions are shining a spotlight for her. Importance. As a character to the series, Sakura accommodates the fan person trope. She idolises another character within their universe, giving that character a higher sense of status. Up until that point, Street Fighter didn't have a character that fit this mould, so introducing Sakura unlocks something fresh for the series. The way her bond to Ryu has been handled by Capcom is actually quite enlightening, if you read between the lines a little bit. She chased Ryu for years on the basis that she thought she wanted to be trained by him because she loved street fighting. When she was brushed off, she vowed to get stronger to grab his attention, knowing the only thing that would pique Ryu's interest is a strong fighter. So she got stronger and he began to notice her. It's only after Sakura wins his respect does she hit a brick wall in her progression, causing her to question herself. If Ryu is noticing her now, then why isn't she feeling even more invigorated to fight? And the conclusion is, Sakura realises that while fighting is fun, it's not what she was seeking at all. She wasn't seeking Ryu's respect, she was seeking his love. She had fallen for him. Street Fighter isn't really known for providing romance in its games. The most we get are Ken's devotion to his wife, and Guile's troubled marriage and maybe one or two filler moments where Ibuki is wasting her time, so to suddenly see this type of romance play out feels like Capcom tapped into something new again. We've not had this in Street Fighter before, at least not presented in such a way where a character's love for another character is grown and developed over the course of numerous game appearances, and it's a solid arc. I'm actually impressed with how they did this, I wasn't expecting it at all. It's also worth quickly noting how Sakura tends to bring out the best traits in Ryu. Alone, he is mostly cold and troubled, acting overly serious to the point of becoming one note and boring, but when Sakura is around, he does lighten up a bit. She provides some warmer tone to the character's identity, giving him a much more compelling presence. Karin is another character that plays an important connection to Sakura, what with them being longtime rivals from way back when. That rivalry seems to have evolved into an actual friendship now, with Karin and Sakura hanging out on a casual level, and that's nice to see. That being said though, does anyone else find it kinda odd that Karin Kanzaki, a woman minted to the back teeth with money and is someone who is able to sponsor Rainbow Mika's entire wrestling career, Karin, a person who hires and provides an income to a lazy British waste man that sits around her luxury estate all day and does literally nothing but eat her food supply, looks at her best friend Sakura hustling a dead end job sweeping floors at a video games arcade and thinks to herself, yeah she's doing alright. Come on man, that's your homegirl out there struggling. Give her a fucking paper round or something, holy shit. You see this? You see that one there? That's that kind of friend who is like, Yo, you've helped me so much fam, I've got you. You ever need anything from me in the future fam, I've got you. Then five years later you call them up and all of a sudden it's, New number, who this? Nah, I'm just memeing. Kareem does obviously care for Sakura a lot. She recognised the fact that Sakura had priorities and couldn't just up and leave to go searching the world for Ryu again, so she located Ryu herself and sent him over to see Sakura. If she didn't care, she wouldn't have done that for her. I just find it humorous that while Sakura's on her grind, Birdie of all people is up in the manor somewhere getting his toes licked. Sakura became iconic as a street fighting schoolgirl. No one can take that legacy away from her either. But while the series grew, would it have been right to keep Sakura trapped in time, forever limited to what she could achieve? No, I don't think it would have been. Capcom's changes had been very hit and miss, so I was concerned with how Sakura might turn out in this game, but thankfully, and much to my amazement, they did a really good job here. Sakura delicately highlights the passing of time and growing up. 
The passions we had as kids might change and evolve as we grow older and we relearn ourselves as we age. Sometimes the answers we're looking for are within us all along, we just haven't experienced enough of life yet to fully recognize those answers. Looking back on her younger years now, I don't see it as a period of stagnation anymore. Thanks to the character finally being allowed to grow up, I look back on those times and instead see a chapter and one that actually went somewhere. Everything about Sakura's return symbolizes an evolution. A great evolution. She is a complete package, with a beginning, a character arc, a substantial amount of character development, and a new direction for her to travel in the future. Actually, you know what? Um, hold it a second. I'm adding this part in right at the last minute, so apologies for it being a bit rushed or, you know, rough around the edges. I'm kind of running off the cuff right now is what I'm saying. I wasn't going to do this because this episode was already becoming a bit of a long thing, but I wouldn't feel right if I wrap things up as they are right now. I kind of have to say this, so just let me run with it. I sat with Sakura for a long while for this episode. I studied her past, played her in Street Fighter V, just generally absorbed everything this character has to offer, and it's dawned on me just how much I really like her. You know, I was in my youth when she was in her youth. I played Street Fighter Alpha 2 on my Sega Saturn all the time. I remember how much I actually used to love her theme song. And now she's grown up and it sort of feels like I've grown up with her. And she mellowed out a bit. The theme song for her stage is a more relaxed version of her original theme, highlighting the fact that she's becoming more settled now in her adult life and I share this aspect with her. She wants to start a family one day as a means to bridge her generation to the next, which mirrors one of my own personal goals in life too. I never thought in a million years Sakura of all characters would not only hit me right in the feels but share a whole bunch of my own thoughts. Of all the characters in this series, it's so crazy to see how this little schoolgirl grew into the one character that I ended up sharing the most in common with. Sakura is getting my Valhar emblem. Like, I know I probably would have regretted it later on if I didn't give this to her and it honestly didn't feel right ending this episode any other way. Yo yo, this episode was brought to you by these wonderful people supporting me on Patreon. Without their help, this show would not be able to continue. If you'd also like to support Who That, please check the link in the description. Any and all help would be appreciated. Cheers everybody. Yeah.